How's everybody doing? Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're very fortunate today that we have some members from the Bergen County Housing and Development uh, that are going to talk to us today uh, about the senior housing complex that's going to be built across the street. Uh, we're all very excited. We've been waiting a long time for this housing project, and it's finally going to become a reality. Um, it's something that I, myself, and all our council members have supported, and we have done so because it's something that Saddlebrook needs, and we feel that our seniors deserve it and deserve to have affordable housing here in town. Um, I want to point out that we have with us, uh, I want to first want to say that uh, Karen Deramino, our council president, she can't be here today, she's on vacation. Um, she was the one that made all the arrangements to have uh, these members from the county housing development come here uh, after this art meeting. We have well, with us uh, former mayor and Karen's husband, Lou Garminio, with us here today. Uh, I know we're supposed to have a couple of council members as well, but uh, it's still a little bit early. I told them 1.30. So um, anyway, uh, we're videotaping this presentation, as you can see, and we're doing this because some members of the public residents are not able to make it, and uh, it's a good idea to have it on our town TV stations and also on the town website and uh, town Facebook page. It'll play there as well. So this way everyone could hear what uh, the county has to say and uh, this, there'll be question and answer uh, section part after the presentation. We have with us also Pete Ludico, our business administrator, uh, to answer some questions. He's been uh, keeping the list of residents that are interested in, uh, in the senior housing so he's here uh, to answer questions as well. Um, I'm also happy to say that we are increasing the hours of the, uh, the senior bus. It's going to be Monday through Friday from 8 to 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Uh, we saw a need for it. Uh, the, the, uh, we're getting a lot more requests. Um, and it's great that more and more of our seniors are using the service. The only problem is we, we may... We may need a bigger bus pretty soon, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And we also have the Township Picnic coming up. That's on Saturday, uh, August the 26th, from 12 noon to 4 p.m. There will be, as, as Joe mentioned during the art meeting, that there, uh, there will be a bus service for the seniors uh, from the senior center here to the park. Um, so see Joe about that. Um, the rain day, just in case uh, we need, is the, the next day, Sunday, the 27th. So uh, that's all I had, but it is 1.30. Do we have, um, I don't think we have John Bialy yet here from the county. Um, so why don't we, why don't we uh, does anybody have any questions? Pete, maybe you can, about the, the list that we have at, at the town hall or any kind of questions? Pete, you want to say a few words? Hi, everyone. The past few years, I know people have signed up. Again, that's to sign up when applications are available. That's not the application process. I just want to remind everybody, when the applications are available, we will contact all the people on the list and let you know what the procedures are once the county notifies us. But that just says you're interested, you are on the list, and we do have that list active. And again, as soon as the county lets us know, we'll pass that information to you. Thanks, Mayor. Anyone have any questions for me? No? Nothing? Where, where's the list? Where is the list? The list is on file town for. Everyone, when you filled out a piece of paper, going back probably five years ago, uh, with your interest of uh, senior housing, uh, that's kept on file. We do have a listing. Uh, I do have it with me, a listing of the names. If you want to check after the meeting, I'll be happy to check and make sure that uh, you're on the list. If you're interested now, see me, we'll put your name, address, phone number. Then, then we have it. 
But again, it's not an application process. It's just indicating you're interested in senior housing in Saddlebrook when the applications become available. And Mr. Allen will be here shortly to explain the process. Uh, he'll give us a date and time. That's when we'll notify everybody that on such and such a date, be at the county offices first thing and get the application. Uh, the senior center, uh, senior housing, uh, what do they have? Uh, Around all the time? No, it's strictly housing. It's apartments. Strictly yes, thirty units, I believe. Uh, but there's no facilities for medical. Is it just one bedroom apartments, or is it? I believe it's one bedroom, and I remember going back a couple of years ago, and it could change. It was about 570 square feet per unit. But again, Mr. Bialy will have more information on the size. And I think what the one lady was asking was, um, is, is there going to be a doctor or some kind of uh, you, medical assistant on the premises? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Verify that with Mr. Bialy, but it's strictly uh, housing for those seniors that qualify. Is everyone going to be notified of whether they you should fill out an application or not, or just the people that are going to fill out an application? Well, certainly publicize, uh, but the people fill out their form that's or sent a letter saying that you're interested in senior housing, you will definitely be contacted. I'm sure the county will be doing press releases as well as through the mayor's office saying that after applications are now available. Again, we don't know that process. It might be when it's closer to opening, more than likely, because they're not going to have a date prior to that. No, thank you. And Mr. Bialy will go over the qualifications as far as income uh, and qualifications that's, that's required for the senior housing. What if somebody has a house and would like to come into the senior center housing? What would they have to do? As far as you already have your home? Well, it's not mine completely yet. I think Mr. Bialy can probably answer that question better than me, but I would think they uh, go through assets. But if you sell your home, I think it's only a percentage of what you get when you sell your house. It's not the entire amount that qualifies for income. Again, Mr. Bialy will have definitive uh, information on it. I'm going back to when it first started and what we were told. I believe that's the process. When do we know that the application, if they're ready, how do they know? They contact us? If you're on the list that we have, we'll contact you. Yeah, I put in my name and the telephone yes. number. Well, that's why we took the information. Yes. We have name, address, phone number. We'll probably send you a letter. No, the address, no, because they say just If there's no address, we'll contact you by phone because you have a phone number. Thank you. But what we want to do is let everybody know as soon as we know. Okay. And so we'll let everybody know in the application process. Again, the application process is through the County of Bergen, uh, not through us. But we're trying to facilitate our seniors and our residents. Do you have any idea when they're going to break ground? <coughs> well, we found out Thursday PSCG disconnected the gas and the electric. They're ready to knock the building down. And the process was to begin building in the fall, weather permitting through the winter, and hopefully next year they'll be ready. But no, there's no, no definite date yet. How many units? I think it was 30 units or 31 units. Okay, any other questions? Again, the man with the answers will be here any minute. But, uh, Excuse me, I thought you had to be like a lump sum to the home and then pay maintenance? No. No, it's a rental. It's a rental. It's a rental. Strictly a rental. It's not a condo. What would the average rent be? The county, Mr. Bialy, could probably tell you that's based on income. So based I, don't, on income. I don't have the answer. To that. Well, we're anxious, we're probably as anxious as uh, you guys to get it going on process. But we're on the process. The county has already ordered a contract to knock the building down. We're just waiting for PSCG to disconnect the utilities. And I think the county is ready to go. Have their funding in place. How long are they going to take? By next year, I think. Within a year. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Peter.
Sorry to put you on the spot there, Peter. Uh, we did have Councilman Dave Garrett come in. I want to recognize him. I don't know, you want to say a few words, Dave? Not recently. I mean, they only checked with you. A couple of months ago. And if I could be of any assistance to anyone, please reach out to me. Uh, but it's nice to see everybody here, and I hope to go around and just say hello to everybody today. So, thank you. You know, uh, as many of you know, we, I keep on preaching in Saddlebrook the good things that are going on in our township, and this is actually one of the good things that are going on in Saddlebrook. The senior housing program that uh, was started is now going to come to fruition. Uh, it's going to be very good here for our township, and uh, I want to commend the mayor and the council for pursuing it, for uh, getting this project uh, moving, uh, moving along. You're going to soon see that the building get knocked down, uh, and the housing is going to come forward. So uh, it's going to be a good thing. And again, uh, I want to thank the mayor, the council, and uh, everyone here who supports the mayor and council because that's the only way we're going to get things done is through your support. And again, uh, I send my messages from uh, the council president, Karen D'Arminio, who is uh, with my grandson, our grandson, uh, in Disneyland right now over in California. So. Uh, I told her about the rainy weather here. It's sunny out there in California. But uh, she sends her regards, and uh, God bless all of you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Bial, you just arrived. Just as usual. Thank you very much, Mayor. Good friend, good people. Uh, I look up to the mayor. He's, uh, he's one of the guys... I want to be like, be like when I grow up. No, it's not it. <laughs> oh, boy. And actually, I have been mayor by many years. I know that. Anyway, hope everyone is well. Thank you all for coming. Um, we're we, we're moving along. We don't we don't have any control over certain things like PSE&G, their gas division, their electric division. We're trying to knock this building down as quickly as possible. And I just brought a picture with me. I shared it with Mr. Lodico. Uh, it was the final step we were waiting for, Mayor, and that's the disconnection of the uh, power. Uh, they took the meters out about two weeks ago. They took the gas meters out about two weeks ago. They disconnected the gas. But the live wire coming into the building was still there. So as of Friday, they disconnected that last wire, and we're ready to take it down. Uh, I think uh, your fire department might want to use the building before we actually take it down for uh, some, some drills and some uh, training. Anyway, uh, I just want to share with you, we're on schedule. As I said, you get held up by things like this, and, uh, but once we start the demolition, I believe the demolition is going to take you about a, a week, that, and that will be a complete flat surface across the street. Um, I have with me today our architect, Ken Mahalik, from RSC Architects in Hackensack, and we brought to you some definitive photos and renditions of what the building will look like. And we were tossing back and forth color combinations, and I thought for this particular area, the colors we selected, which are all earth tones and all fit within the area and how it looks, I don't think we'll be sticking out. I think the building will have some very gracious points and uh, the colors we selected as I indicated uh, all the earth tones and the tans the browns and if you want to take a look at which on that border on the left every one of those little cubes of color and or carpet and or tile it'll be indicated next to it where that will be it'll either be the tile in the bathroom it'll be the common area carpeting or it'll be uh, or it'll be the uh, color of the walls. So with that, uh, the mayor is bringing him up here. This is good. We'll have a. So as you can see here with the colors, I've selected an autumn, what they call an autumn tan, as the hardy plank part of the building, and the brick, which will be on the front of the building. This will be brick. And this will be brick, and I think we have that selection. Do we have that? Yeah, I do have the brick. Okay, we have the brick. Uh, but just to show you, this is going to be the front of the building. The entrance over here, 
And these are two porticos. You can see this is a little extended. It's more or less like an L on each side. And then this is the back of the building facing the post office. We don't want to give them any brick. <laughs> so this is going to, the dark brown you see here is going to be hardy plank. Does anyone know what hardy plank is? Okay, hardy plank is what's taken over for aluminum siding, for wood siding, for clapboard siding. Hardy plank is actually uh, what, what's known as, it's cement board. These here pieces are actually made out of cement, which means that the fire rating goes way up. Doesn't burn. Aluminum melts, regular siding burns, hardy plank stays in place. Plus the fact it's a sheath of, of, uh, of cement which will guarantee that when it's cold outside, the cold is going to remain outside. It doesn't transmit weather. And when it's hot outside, it's not going to be hot inside. So we're saving on you know, many, many uh, facets of operating this building on air conditioning, on heating, and especially on maintenance. Now I know about this stuff here because I rebuilt my house 10 years ago. I actually moved out. I mean, I was in my house 25 years. I live up in Oakland. And we moved out, and instead of investing in a house in South Carolina, Florida, I love Oakland, so I, I want to stay there. And, I'm, and, and we did it in Hardy Plank. And they tell us, because the paint on a piece of Hardy Plank, do we have a piece of Hardy Plank here? actually sam physical samples. OK. I want to take a look at it. Anyone wants to take a look at it? This is the color that was selected. And if you look at the side, you'll see it's concrete. And, and it tells you that this color is actually baked on, and it's six coats of paint. And you don't have to paint it for 20 years. Well, mine is nine years old, and my wife, who happens to be a, a neat freak, she wanted to have the house power washed, so she had a company come over and give her an estimate. They rang the doorbell and said, ma'am, so we just looked at your house. Your house doesn't need to be washed. Says, There's nothing wrong with it that a hose can't do. So it, it stay, it's, for, as far as maintenance goes, the hardy plank substance uh, creates a very good working material for many, many years. Why don't you pass that down so everyone can get a look at it? Unless you're going to build a house with that piece. But, you know, I don't think you'll get to it. <laughs> anyway, so you got the hardy plank going on. You have the brick veneer going on. Um, and here's the brick. There it is. So that, if you look at that piece and that piece, they go well together. And somebody else has the light shade. It's being passed up. That's the, that's the autumn tan, and I think that's woodland. What's the name of that? The back of that man? Is that woodland? That's autumn tan. What's the other one? The lady over there. That's. <laughs> How is that hardy plank put on? The hardy plank is put on the same way regular siding is put on. They come in planks. So it'll come in 20 foot lengths. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty, yeah, it is heavy. It's concrete. It's concrete. So you want that, it, so as, as I said, it serves as a uh, very good insulator. And it lasts. No, no, that's, that's the hardy plank. That's what's guaranteed and warranted forever. So, and you don't have. And you don't have to change that. You probably next time somebody's going to change that, we'll all be uh, we'll all be under the next place. <laughs> they got hardy. And, yeah, I think so. I think everything upstairs is hardy plank. Anyway, does anyone have any questions about anything? Yeah. Karen had mentioned Karen Germanio had mentioned a while back that it was going to be prefab. Is that the word? Prefabrication modular. M O D U L A R. Modular is being. It's, it's a, something that uh, we've had our first experience with up in, up in Northvale. I built a similar project in Northvale. We opened it up a year ago. It's called modular. It, what it does by going modular, it saves you it's several, no, it saves you a lot of things. It saves you time. It saves you, uh, it, it gives you a feeling of confidence that the building is being built in, it, you know, when I was in construction for 35 years, I was an electrician. And when, when you get a bunch of guys building a, a high rise or a building in December, and you get a bunch of guys building the same building in June, 
you're going to get twice as much production in June as you do in December. So the building, the modular buildings ensures that you're being, the building is being built in controlled areas. It's inside. They build the building inside. And they actually build it in boxes. And the boxes come about the size of a tractor trailer. So when they come here with the boxes, it'll probably be, Northvale was around 43 boxes. And not, they're not only built in a very uh, controlled circumstance, but they are tested and retested by a third party who comes into the factory and checks everything. When I say they're built in there, they're built completely in there. Everything is in the building. The carpeting is in. There's the switches are in. The receptacles are in. Everything internally is wired. The cabinets are in the kitchen. The counters are in the kitchen. The bathroom is fill, fully appointed with the sink, with the toilet, with the shower. Everything is there ready to go. Once that box is finished, it's put on a tractor trailer and it's delivered right across the street. Now we'll set up a staging area, what they call, and a crane will come in and start setting the boxes. And it's more or less like when I was a kid, it was an erector set. That's what you're going to have. They're going to be put together, and the company, which is called Simplex Homes, if you ever want to look it up on the internet, they'll come with a crew of 15 to 20 guys, and they lock all the boxes together. Now, up in, up in the uh, Northvale, there was 44 boxes. They were delivered. Now, we did it. We did it. It was on St. If anyone's familiar with St. Anthony's Church, we actually knocked out similar. We knocked down St. Anthony's Grammar School, which hadn't been used for around 12 years. And at the time, uh, I was approached by Father Jerry Hahn about doing that project. We were building an 11-unit senior building at 176 Paris Avenue. And he came over, and I used to use a bar, Father Jerry's parking lot for our construction trailer in our meetings. And he came over to me one day, he said, John, because he used to be my associate pastor. I got a presentation church at Upper Saddle River. He was our associate pastor there for 10 years. So I knew Father Jerry pretty well. He said, what do you think we can do with our school building? Now, the school building was attached to the uh, St. Anthony's Gymnasium, which was attached to the St. Anthony's Parish Hall, which actually formed a U-shape. He said, we haven't used the school in 12 years. And the problem is, he says, the heating system, the air conditioning system is in the school. So every year we have to heat the school up all year long and nobody ever uses it. And it was nine classrooms. It was a grammar school, kindergarten through the eighth grade. So I said, let's take a look at it. So we took a look and I found out we had to knock it down because the elevation of the building was like three foot off the grade. And we wanted to put three stories there. So to stay in bounds on the height restrictions in the town, we knocked it down, started from grade, and we built up. So we... When they started delivering the boxes up there, the boxes we had to, we had to go by certain rules. We had to be out in the parking lot on Saturday and Sunday for church and mass. And Monday morning, trucks were waiting to come in. And we would unload the trucks, set them up, and the, the finishing crew would lock them all together. And we had did a little bit of pre-setup work by bringing in all, like the sewer system, and which is the main uh, piping for the sewer system, for the water system, and for the electrical system. So the boxes came in, they were loaded, and in nine working days that building was completely put up. Nine days. Nine days. But it took another six months to tie everything in. You know, you have to tie everything into the outside amenities, the sewer, the water, the electric, uh, the TV, everything else had to be brought in. And then the only thing that's not finished in the buildings are the common areas, like this, these tables, like the walk, the hallways between the apartments. They have to be finished by the general contractor. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for something to happen, and nothing ever happened. The building worked out perfectly. I think that it goes through so many um, renditions of being inspected. In Pennsylvania, where it's built, you get a product that's kind of the best you can get expect. And I, the people, if anyone ever wants to take a ride up there, if you guys got that bus out there, I'll show you what it looks like. The people that live inside there think they live in a hotel. They love it. 
and they have a big screen TV is being put into the community room this week. They have uh, a nice community room. They have a little kitchen, just like you see back there. The community room up there, because of how it's laid out, it's probably as big as this room, the community room in the building. Anyway, uh, that worked out real well. So when the opportunity came for this building, and it is a savings of money, is a tremendous savings in money. Uh, I would estimate that the savings is about three quarters of a million dollars. So for our budgeting purposes, it works well. Um, I think I've shared with you as much as my brain can handle. But, uh, <laughs> yes, and I feel very comfortable here because I got to share with you, I'm a councilman up in Oakland. And as Karen is the senior liaison, I'm the senior liaison in Oakland. So I'm, I'm used to uh, hanging out with my peers. <laughs> okay. Yes, back yes, I'm looking at the renderings. Yes. Are they one, one story apartment or are they? That's a two story house? building. Huh? Two, building. two story building. First floor here, second floor upstairs. Right, but are the apartments two stories or are the apartments one story? One story. One story. So you're gonna, you'll, your apartment will be on the first floor or the second floor. It won't be on, you, there's no walking there up and down. There's an elevator though, right? There's an elevator, there's yes, elevator. there is an elevator. How big are the units? The units are about 650 to 675 in that area. Correct. That's normal. Actually, HUD regulations say it's 550, I think. But we don't do 550, that's a little bit tiny for us. So we. The experience that we bring to the table is 1,100 units in Bergen County that are operating under the auspices of that Bergen County Housing Authority. I actually work for the Housing Development Corporation, which is part of the Housing Authority, except on the nonprofit side of the Housing Authority. I build, then I transfer it over upon completion, and they pick it up. Uh, housing Authority has the best team of maintenance workers you ever see. You'll, we, we have to go through a state regulated and federal regulated inspection every year called the RAD, and we come out 99 to 98 to 100 every year. We have a great bunch of guys who know the buildings, they know the people. Uh, there's familiarity, familiarity uh, between our residents and our workers and our, our people of staff that take care of the building. There'll be uh, two or three guys that'll be assigned to that building once it gets in operation. Now, so, how, how big is uh, 650? How big is 650? It's, it's not as big as this no, room. No, no, I, if you can imagine. Okay, 10 by 20 foot room is 200 square foot. 10 by 10 is 100 square foot. So if, if you got a room that's if you got a bedroom that's 10 by 12, it's 120 square foot. So it's six times the size of six small bedrooms. But you know, you, you only got one bedroom, you got one living area, living room. Uh, there'll be a, uh, a kitchen, kitchenette. Kitchenette, no, just a little kitchenette, right? A little kitchen. I mean, it's not a full-blown kitchen. You, you can't, I mean, if you're thinking about like inviting 30 or 40 people for Thanksgiving, it's not going to happen. <laughs> You might want to order out. <laughs> yes. Are there firewalls? Are the modules built with firewalls? Okay, yes, they are. Yes, they are. We have to we have to meet all the regulations provided to us by the state of New Jersey and the federal and the federal agencies that are involved in our projects. So we we have we have very stringent rules to follow, and we follow the rules. We don't want to be the bad bad apple in a pack. Because when we go out for our funding on all our projects, not only this one, we go out for funding, we actually are in a competition against other towns. So you have to provide good idea and good set of values for your building to be built, like you have to be near transportation, which we are. You have to be near shopping, which we are. You have to be, you have to be downtown. You have to know you get a lot of points for it, be near a senior center. It's pretty close. <laughs> so that's pretty close. Anyway. What about the utility? Are they supplied or do you have to pay for them? It's, you know, I don't know how this is going to work out. That's out of my working area. But if, it, if the, the water is included, we pay for the water. 
because we don't want everyone to have a water meter. That's too much of a charge to have. Um, electric is probably going to be individual use. Um, and heat is gas. It's what we have, these are, we call them PTAC units. And PTAC is a combination of an air conditioner and a heating system. There's one in the living room and there's one in the bedroom. So all our units are all PTAC. And I can tell you what we use, we use Island Air, which is gas for the heat and electric for the air conditioning. If we ever did, somebody should shoot me if I should ever ask for electric heating because that's like putting your iron on and then your meter goes like this yeah, constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's gas heat and what gas, the numbers on gas, natural gas keep going down. And that's the uh, what preferred. What is the stove? Is it electric or gas? It's what? The stove. The stove is electric stove. Okay. We don't put any gas, no, it, no gas in the, in the kitchens. Mm -hmm. How many closets? Is this a good sized closet in the bedroom? Yes, it's a walk-in closet. It's a walk-in yeah. closet, yeah. and in the yeah. kitchen, yeah. when you walk yeah. in, there's, there's, a, little, there's a coat closet. There's a coat closet as you come in. <laughs> but if you want to take a look at <laughs> what the colors are in the hallways and, <laughs> and the apartments, I have them all over here. What's the water heater? Yeah. Water heater is a, it's a 60 gallon water heater? Uh, might be less no, than that. 30, 40 gallon? Probably 30 to 40. 30, 40, 30, 40 gallon water heater in each apartment. Yeah, that's the water. It's gas. Gas? It's electric. That's the only thing that's electric. It's not in the apartment. Here's the whole thing. To install the gas for the gas heaters would have put our budget way out of balance. So it was easier to run a wire than the gas line. So, and it's much more efficient on this side of the ledger uh, to build the building. We have to, okay, our confinement to a budget is very particular, and we try to stay within the budget. Anybody else? Yes? Also, about washer and dryer. It's going to be each It's going to be each floor. It's going to, it's each floor has a community washer dryer. Each floor has one community washer dryer. It'll be coin operated. And from what I understand from my daughter, who lives in Hoboken, she says they take credit cards now. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah. They do, don't they? Yeah? yeah. 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 Okay. I don't do that. I got married 40 years ago. <laughs> What's that? Wash your drawer. No. No, that's why there's one on every floor, on each floor. So, and I think we have, was two people. Two sets on each floor. Two sets of washer and dryer on each floor. So, how many units on each floor? Fifteen on each floor. Yes. They're all handicap accessible or adaptable. They're accessible. Everyone is handicap accessible. Adaptable. With the difference between handicap accessible and handicap adaptable, I have some of those units throughout Burton County. I'm building. Up in Northvale, I'm building 40 units of housing for people with Asperger's and uh, autism. And we're doing 40 units of accessible, but 10 of those units, no, all the units on the first floor, so half of them, 20, are all, adapt are all accessible. The second floor is uh, adaptable. That means it could be changed to fit the purpose without too much construction work. So these are all accessible. These are all made from the beginning. Yes? Uh, what about repairs to any of the um, Maintenance. washers? Maintenance. It's us. So everything is on us. The residents aren't responsible for anything except uh, they all have to take a, a, a slot to mow the lawn once a week. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's part, part of our exercise program. We have uh, Either it's farmed out to a contractor, or if we have the ability to do it in the house, we do it in the house. Okay. And, and if an item needed to be replaced, it would be replaced? It'll be replaced call. within, you call us up, it'll be replaced the next day. Someone told me that a director is going to be staying in an apartment? No, 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 no. Originally, we had one apartment as a superintendent's apartment, but the budgeting, see, we have apartments all around here, so this goes into a zone. Uh -huh. 
So the superintendent will be a zone superintendent. Yeah, right. uh, there was one scheduled in our original renditions, but that was 2011 when we first started working on this. And since then, the numbers on building these places have risen so much, we had to get our cash flow a little bit higher. We had to take that superintendent's apartment out uh, and make it a, uh, a standard apartment. Mm -hmm. so do, you, do you know anything about the qualifications? I'm, it's, the qualifications are, you know, I think, I'm pretty sure, Mayor, is it 55? I, I, I'm doing so many of these. Uh, no, it it's either 55 or 62. Pretty sure this is 55. <laughs> it's all subsidized. It goes according to your income. So, yeah, you, what your income everything, everything you have at the end of the year under your W four form, that's what's that's your income, and whatever the the stable elevation of whatever is considered to be acceptable, I think it's around forty thousand dollars for a married couple, and around thirty five thousand dollars for a single person. Uh, total inclusive of everything you have. In other words, if you have a million dollar policy, a million dollars in the bank. You're getting X amount of income from that. A million dollars doesn't count. It's the income. Mm -hmm. Income. I didn't say what you have. I said income. So assets so, don't matter. So what? Assets don't matter. Well, assets don't do not matter unless it's another home. You can't have the. You can't use this place as your weekend getaway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now then, then you just got yourself a lot of income. Yeah. And you put that on top of your social security, you're out. Yeah. Then we send the, the, the we send the affordable house police the house. Then I call the mayor because he knows all the right people to call. <laughs> you know, you bring up something that you bring up something that happened when I was about seven years ago, from 2002 to 2011. I was I I actually built. If you anyone familiar with Overpeck Park, the new big one, yes. well, that's one of my projects. I, I was with the Housing Authority at the time. Uh, I was with the Bergen County Parks Department. That was a project I was on for six years. And we had to import a lot of soil to build that Overpeck landfill up. And we were actually taking dredge from the Hudson River. The mayor might remember this because it made front page on the Bergen Record. They actually found a skull. No. And, oh, but there must, how many skulls do you think are in the Hudson River? <laughs> you know, 20s and 30s, you went through some rough times there. You said the wrong thing, you did the wrong thing, you said you pointed out the wrong person, your skull is probably in there. <laughs> anyway, what, what we did find a skull, we had to call in authorities to check it out and find out. They, could, they couldn't find anything. The skull could have been 100 years old at that time. What about parking? Parking, it'll be... Too many parking places. I'm trying to get them out of there. No, I'm so I'm only kidding. There's 30 apartments that we have. 30 units. 30 par apartments, 30 units of parking. The RSIS, which is the what you use for, for your the state regulations on parking for affordable housing for seniors, is 0.5. So if I was going by regulation, I only have to put 15 parking places in there. But you and I both know that's completely unacceptable. Because number one, you're going to have visitors, you're going to have uh, maybe a service person come in, maybe you're going to have a doctor come in, maybe you're going to have somebody come in and hang your television, they got to park somewhere. So we put extra, we have 30 units of parking for 30 apartments. And what we find out is, half the people don't drive anymore. Especially since we are near transportation, right down the block. Catch a bus, go wherever you're going to go. Yes, sir. Are any of those uh, parking spots a handicap? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many do we have? We have two. Two, two, is, uh, two uh, and we could remodel the parking lot if we had more need. We could remodel the parking lot to make more handicap accessible parking areas. But right now we have two. There's one of your customers right there waving. <laughs> We'll we'll have a we'll have a space for her. <laughs> <laughs>
if she happens to be lucky enough to get in. Yes. So I just have a question. I know it's based on income. Yes. But how will the individual be selected? That's another area that hasn't, you know, that's another team of people in our office. And it's usually, it, it could be first come, first serve. It could be lottery. It could be, see, that's not my area of expertise. And I don't want to say anything that will get me in trouble two weeks from now when it comes back that I said this. I don't know that, so I don't say that. Okay? Yeah, I have to be smart. See, we're on television. This is all being recorded. I have to say, I, I'm a, you know, we, 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 I don't know, you guys, you don't take the council meetings, do you? Yes. Oh, you don't? So we're on live. I've been open. You're on live. You put it on, we're on, you're on, on television. And then it plays three times a day, seven days a week. So if you miss something, you'll go always go back to channel 45 or 5 us and, and pick it up. The burdens of your house, how many of these do they run? 1,100. 1,100. Yeah, the, the question was how many units do we operate? We operate 1,100 units throughout Bergen County. I think it's 25 different communities. We have 143 units in East, I'm just na naming the ones off the top of my head. East Rutherford, 143. Bergenfield, 127. I just finished Rivervale, uh, 50 units on Cedar Lane, Rivervale. The uh, Northvale is 30 units. <clears throat> Northvale, we actually have a triangle. I call it the triangle location. St. Anthony's Church is on the front of Paris Avenue as you go into the Rockley Country Club or you're going to play golf at the Rockley Golf Course. St. Anthony's is right on Paris Avenue. Directly across the street from St. Anthony's is the Manor on Paris. And at the other end of the street is the convent of St. Anthony's, which 10, 10, 12 years ago, we changed over to apartments. And we have 10 units for seniors at that location. Then we have the brand new place, which is the modular location. That's called the Villa on the Villa, on, the Franklin Street Villa, and that has 30 units. So I like to put I mean, they gave me the responsibility of naming the buildings, and I love that. So I'm going to make a, give a nice name to this building, of course. So, uh, it's only 30 and not 60 units, that there are a lot of seniors. And I understand that, but... I would ask that it be 1,000 units, because that's what we need. But if everybody in Bergen County, every town in Bergen County, 72 towns, if everybody had a 30-unit apartment place, we fill our, our need. So, as I said, I have 24 towns, 25 towns where I have senior apartments, senior buildings. They're not all 30. Some of them are 12, some are 14, some are 50, some are 143. It's just the going area of, of, ex, of, of expertise right now says anywhere between 30 and 50, depending on, you know, you, you have to have a big piece of property to put 50 units because now I got to put 50 parking places. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, once you go up, when you, once you start using 100, I got 100 parking places. Parking takes up much more space than the actual building. Because the building I can go up. Another question: Is this going to be built on level ground, or are you going to put cars under the building? No, no, no. This is level ground. You are grade, on grade, as they say, okay. and your parking will be on grade. So it will be all level. Well, that would be great, except it, except it adds much more money to the cost because now you have to elevate the building, you have to put it on stilts, and once you start doing that, you have to start driving piles. So we don't, we try to keep our costs down, and our, we do, I'm trying to do one, my, if I had the opportunity to, I'd put one in every town. People in my town, my seniors want me to build yesterday. Is there? And then somebody else will occupy. Yes. Yes. It'll be ongoing. That's well, actually, that is your last place, unless you go into a hospital. Or you hit the lottery tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or the other one. This, anyway. is, open, this is open, open to all residents in Bergen County. Open to everyone in Bergen County, yes. Now, certain towns have the wrong houses. Yes, they do. 
Yes, sir. Certain towns do operate, but it's another layer of bureaucracy that that town has to hire and you have to pay for. Okay. You know, it's like Garfield has their own housing authority. I know that. But Burton County has nothing to do with that. No, nothing to do with that. Anyway, any, any other questions? Mr. Ludico, do you have any questions for me? Yes. Uh, I remember a presentation when we first started there, and they showed a rendition of the building. Now, I live only three houses away from this building. Right. And I was concerned how this building would blend in with the existing building. You're right. Now, all those existing buildings that go back in 50, 60 years, they have shutters on the windows. Right. And as I recall, the original rendition showed centers, uh, uh, shutters. Right. Now, I'm back here, my eyes aren't too good. No, I don't think that. Yeah. No, we don't have shutters on this building because the style that we chose doesn't necessarily call for it. Okay. So we try to do what's going on in the real world out there, what's building today. And my, I rely on my professional architects to tell me which which is the best mode to go through. Okay, so basically, you're just going to be a renter, and you're going to have a landlord per se. Oh, you're going to be you'll you'll be renting, and you'll yeah you'll have a Bergen County Housing Authority will be the uh, manager. We don't we are we don't consider ourselves landlords because we're not profit oriented. As I said, I'm the nonprofit arm of the housing authority because anything, any residual income that flows in, we use on the next project. So this is all, I wish I could do this every day of the week, but I am one guy and I'm trying to do, I'm doing four, I got four projects going on right now. I got, I got one in up, Upper Saddle River, 46 units for our seniors and 24 units for uh, special needs. 40 units of Frank Lakes, all for special needs. Uh, Little Ferry, we're at the very base of consideration for Little Ferry, where they want 40 units of senior housing. Built up on, that has to be built on stilts because it's in a flood zone. And then I have Carlstadt Mayor La Bulia wants us to knock down their school 12 and build the 30 unit project there. In fact, I took him on a tour of the Northvale project and he asked me very seriously, is there any way we could lift this building up and just have it transported over to Carlstadt and put it down in the parking lot? And I said, I wish I could. I wish I could wave a magic wand and have another building there. Yes? Uh, last question, what about pets? Pets, no pets. You get a picture of one, you can hang it in the hall. <laughs> you can have a fish. Fish, no problem. Goldfish, no problem. Yes. That'll be released. That information will be released to me as soon as I know. I'll let the officials in Saddlebrook know. I'll let everyone know what the uh, order of uh, course will be as far as applications. Um, they're going to probably ask first for a list of people who want an application. And I'll share that with Peter and with the mayor, and then we'll go from there. Well, what about the people that are already on the list? The way to, you know, well, they'll, they'll, if they're on... We have a list since the yeah. beginning. Okay. Only a list of people that are interested in the applications. I have Okay, Peter has that list. Okay. So we're all good to go. What, uh, what exactly is going to be low income and affordable? Nothing. Affordable? What we deal with is affordable housing, which is considered to be low-income housing. Affordable and low-income is more or less the same thing. There are standards that I don't set, set by the state and federal government. What's considered, what's considered affordable in Trenton or New Jersey or Newark and Saddlebrook and Oakland is different. What's considered affordable in Wyoming is another story. I mean, it might be $8,000 a year. I don't know. But we, it goes according to the median income of the area. So whatever the median income for Bergen County, Central Bergen County, uh, Southern Bergen County, whatever that is, that's the numbers that they use to put together the scale of, of uh, rental 
as opposed to when. So the rent is paid to the housing authority? Yes. Does Saddlebrook get any part of that? No, Saddlebrook. If they were caught, I'd call the mayor and say, get the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope I asked, answered all your questions. I hope the building is to your liking. I think it'll fit well. I actually changed the colors in the last week. I actually changed the colors. This was what it was, but this had an orange brick to it, and I said, it doesn't work. The red or orange brick didn't work, so I thought the brown fit a little bit better. I think a little bit more class to it, and it doesn't stick out. It lays back. Anyway, I hope I answered everyone's questions. I thank you so much for coming out and joining us. Thank you so much. If that's wrong information, you got a blank team. I, you know, I do so many of these, those numbers go in and out of my head and they're all different. The other thing is, I know, because we've had several meetings uh, with housing and development, I think that there's a certain percentage of those units, the 30 units, that have to be co-op, right? Certain percentage of, yeah. I, I really don't know, I'm not into the planning board, the planning aspect of this, but there, these will have a good effect on your obligation in town. I don't know what that obligation would be. I think it's one-to-one. -one. I'm not sure. But whatever the Saddlebrook obligation is, subtract 30. What that means is um, COA is affordable housing. For, um, That's the Council on Affordable Housing, COA. And they set the standards for each town. They say you have to have this many units. So whatever your obligation, Oakland I know is 169. Where is they? But I know the fact that the fact that the county went with conventional uh, funding, right, in order to build um, the complex, <coughs> that because of that we our obligation is less. Right. I think if we went with some kind of federal monies, uh, grants, the, or obligation, income, yeah. the obligation would have been more. Yeah. And I know there's a difference. The ones that are COA. I believe that has to be a lot of it. This is this is just from what I okay. That might change because that changed for us last year. Okay, we so. had we had two two projects open last year. One was by lottery because HUD was involved. Right. HUD's not involved in this project. Right. So the, once HUD is involved, they come in, they take all the names, they throw into a computer, and they start coming up on a board. So but it could be first come first serve. I think more than likely we would fall in could probably would be first come first serve, which is better. Better for us. Better for us. Better for us. Where does first come first serve mean? That means that means yes. Yeah. That means there'll be a date, you'll be told if you're on the list, you'll be told have your application, have ready. application ready. Or you're gonna come up, get the application, I'll hand it to you, you fill it out, hand it back in. As soon as they get it, they time stamp. They still get the thirty first person to be out. Could be out, but maybe not, because you know, not everybody that applies is gonna get it. Not so everyone goes goes through the vetting process. Right, it's a whole vetting process. Where is the power? Oh, it's, it's the um, state of New Jersey. State of New Jersey, right. Can you give me a check? Somebody gave me a check. Center on affordable housing. I don't have enough of you. What are you doing? I'm sorry, what's that? What's your shit now? No, we'll, we'll, we'll call you. We'll call you. You're on the list. We'll, 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 we'